So we're going to be traveling alone right now, and it's going to get us really stressed. We don't know when a zombie is going to come around the corner. Heart is going to be racing because of the activation of the sympathetic nervous system under stress. So normally heart beats like 72 times per minute and it's going to pump about 5 to 13 liters. But under exertion it can go up to 4 times more. Heavy exertion it can go up to like 7 times more. All this because we need more blood flow to reach the muscles that are exerting. And normally muscles require just like 150 ml under resting state, but under heavy exertion, it can require like 16,000 ml per minute. Okay, so let's make this jump. Oh, that's not fun. Okay, so how does the sympathetic nervous system help to do that? It is going to constrict the blood vessel. So the diameter becomes less and the velocity of flow is going to increase. But in the muscle that is exerting, it's not going to help because we need increased blood volume as well. So locally, there must be something else happening. That is, under exertion, the ATP is getting used up. So this ATP is uh, going to, you know, also produce a byproduct that is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide produced by the metabolic processes is going to locally increase the diameter of the blood vessel in the exerting muscle. And that is how that particular muscle is going to get a increased blood volume. Okay, let's go down. Oh, please slip me. So when we slip and fall, what happens is muscle neuromuscular coordination becomes active. Uh, it is going to activate the Reflexes, muscle reflexes such as muscle stretch, Golgi tendon reflex. So all this is going to help stabilize ourselves. So for this to occur, you know, quickly to stabilize ourselves, it needs a quick response time. So for that, the body uses the fastest nerve fibers that are available in the human body. That is the type A alpha neuron. Oh no. Hope that's not a zombie that's going to wake up. You alive? Okay, I wouldn't do that. The thing about you know dead bodies or cadavers is that it has a lot of microorganisms. A male dead body will have abundant streptococcus. Okay, there's more and more. Not only streptococcus is going to have clostridium, but I wouldn't worry about clostridium because Unless I have a deep wound to show, it's not going to affect. It is anaerobic bacteria. Uh, whereas streptococcus, it can cause sore throat and it can even cause severe skin infections. And how does it spread? It spreads through dust. And kicking a dead body would probably, you know, we'd be breathing in infected dust. So, not the best thing to do. Okay, let's get out of here. Uh, what about uh, female dead body then? Again, uh, you know, that also has a separate set of microorganisms which is going to be abundant. What's similar is streptococcus in male and female, but instead of clostridium, we have more of pseudomonas. Oh my gosh. That's a frozen dead body, not a zombie. <laughs> so you can see the bluish color. And interesting thing about pseudomonas is we have the keyword blue pus attached to it. So a bluish dead body and blue pus we can remember easily from that. Right? Okay, there's more and more. So I think we should get out of here soon. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Oh my god, that's going to hurt a lot. Imagine having your strain back right now. Okay, dodge. Right. Whoa, and she has some good power in her. That's another one. Alright, let's get ready. Yeah. Oh god. 
one. Nice. Oh no, that thing's fastness, so I should think of infection now. ATP gets used up a lot when we are, you know, fighting, a lot of exertion happening. So body needs to replenish ATP quickly. It depends on phosphocreatin, which is another high energy compound that is present inside the cell. But this is a short term solution. It doesn't do it for a long time. When we fight more and more, we get more and more tired. Whoa. Oh no. Jeez. Oof. That was a bad one. We have quite a few scratches to show. And these things are pretty dirty, isn't it? Even the kind of infections that it would carry. So probably we can think of the bluish nature of the skin that means it has high amount of carbon dioxide so the dirtiness sweat contains a lot of salt accumulation that and uh, okay so all this could be a favorable situation for growth of infective microorganisms like uh, staphylococcus and streptococcus so we need to think about what kind of microorganism that our wounds would carry so that we can identify the kind of antiseptic that will be ideal for it. Okay, so what did we see in the game so far? We have seen something about sympathetic response, about vasodilation and something about neuromuscular reflexes. We are beginning to discuss about microorganisms and also about how energy is getting utilized further. All right. So we can probably I game for some more MCQs. Let's see if we can recall what we have discussed. So based upon our fitness level, you know the heart can pump out so much blood. So if you are a well-trained athlete, how much blood can it pump out? 35 liters as opposed to, you know, 5 liters in a resting state. When we are exerting carbon dioxide, we breathe out a lot. So, which metabolic process brings about all this carbon dioxide production? It is the citric acid cycle. So, whether we depend upon glucose or fat or protein for energy, it all comes into the citric acid cycle and emits carbon dioxide. So, in exertion, you know, blood volume has to increase in the muscle. So, it depends upon all the following except which is the odd man out there. It is the oxygen because oxygen abundance will cause vasoconstriction. So, sweat, you know, it uh, we emitting sweat, we emit a lot of toxins, we say. So, which is normally not seen in sweat. Glucose is not normally seen in sweat. So high salt content is beneficial for the growth of which microbacteria? Is it Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pyogens, Clostridium perfringens or Pornibacterium thickly? Yes, it is the Staphylococcus aureus. Also, you know, blood agar with a high carbon dioxide content like 20 to 25 percent carbon dioxide is good for growth. So when we are panting for breath, from where do we derive the energy? Is it the phosphocreatin, anaerobic glycolysis, aerobic glycolysis, glycogenolysis? Is it both A and B or both B and D? It is both B and D, anaerobic glycolysis and glycogenolysis. So, if all this is interesting to you, kindly do like and subscribe to my channel and show your support. Thank you.